first of all, it's time for our Future Shock 2.0 segment with workforce trends expert Ira Wolf. Ira Wolf, welcome back for Future Shock 2.0. On a recent segment, you talked about remote work and working in person at the office and the incredible impact on commercial real estate, a lot of vacant space out there. So economists and analysts on Wall Street have been talking and writing about a potential crash in the commercial real estate market is this a harbinger of what could be coming less people going into the office yeah thanks john uh it's a fascinating question and, and I'm, i certainly am not a real estate uh, guru on this at all so a lot of these are my opinions and i'm learning from other really smart people yeah i, I think it is uh i think there's going to be a, a transformation of a lot of corporate space i mean a lot of people that we've talked to uh, are reducing their footprint uh you know some of it i just read about and some of it i know from working with clients. So uh, everybody's reevaluating that footprint. What does that mean? But there are already movements um, to transform some of those spaces. Some are, are looking at transforming them into uh, residential. I know in, uh, well, in your backyard in New York City, uh, the city itself, a lot of that is how do you bring back people? So for, for a year, for the last 20 years, people have uh, gone over the bridge to Brooklyn and Queens, and now they're coming back. Uh, into the city. So it could be revitalization. I don't know what happens to Brooklyn and Queens when they do that. Um, but there are people that are that are looking because they love the city life uh, to be able to do that. Uh, so they miss that. But again, and I mentioned this in a previous episode that we talked with uh, Cushman and Wakefield, Brian Berthold there, and they had a fascinating concept that in addition to this ex- experience uh, per square foot, but they talked about what's the future of business space going to be? And they talked about it operating on more of a community center type of a model that what's missing is, I mean, people talk about productivity, but it, but in order to have productivity, you need to give people not only the tools and the environment, but the incentive to be productive. And business hasn't been normally good with that when their only choice was, if you want a job, you come to our office. Uh, now people have choices. So when you come to the office, is there a purpose? Is there a reason I should be there in flesh and blood to meet? Because so often when you get in there, you come in and there's a meeting of 10 people and three people said, oh, I couldn't make it in. My child was sick. I was sick. I couldn't get transportation. Um, I had a doctor's appointment and they're remote, which means there really wasn't that impact. So how do you get everybody in the office or in person, doesn't have to be in the office, but in one place at one time, uh, and then, you know, be able to to have the metrics that say, we are more productive when we're all together. We we do collaborate all together. We get more ideas in a shorter period of time. One of the things that was missing, and I think this was real key for Mark, I said, I never expected to get this advice from a, a commercial real estate company, is they said, what's missing is serendipity. What's missing in when we're on screens is serendipity that we, yeah, we, we could say, Oh, I forgot to ask you this. And I can send you a Slack message or a text message or a LinkedIn message. We communicate like that all the time. So we could do that spontaneously, but it, it takes an effort and it's, it's not necessarily, again, we may lose that moment when you're walking down the hallway, when you're in a meeting, somebody suggests something, uh, there's all this information going on at the same time. There is a loss of serendipity of those specific moments that trigger ideas, innovation, growth, feelings uh, that we don't get when we're w- working remote. But I also would say we're not, we don't get it yet because we don't understand how to do it. We're so used to doing it that we have to do it in person. So we, we've lost serendipity. We, you know, go, but going back to the commercial space, uh, going back to Cushman and Wakefield, uh, you know, I think that's where the community center comes in. That when you go to a community center, when you go to a conference, when, when you go to a hotel, when you go to a meeting, The first thing you don't do is go, where's my desk? You don't ask, where's my desk? You basically meet people, you talk, you have conversations, you, you, you grab two chairs and you say, Hey, let's, let's sit down and talk. So we're, we're early stages, but it is definitely going to radicalize and transform corporate space because right now people are just shutting it down. It's expensive. They're not using it. Um, it's going to evolve. I don't think it'll ever go back to where it was. Um, but it looks like we've hit a plateau. 
Thank you, Ira Wolf. Ira is a workforce trends expert, a top five global thought leader on the future of work and HR, author, TEDx speaker, and host of the very popular Geek Skeezers and Googleization podcast. Speaking of podcasts, I had the distinct pleasure of teaming up with Ira when he hosted the team of the top rated business podcast. Odeon Capital Conversations for a live webinar with yours truly and his co-host Jason Cochran. It's up there on LinkedIn, YouTube and on all the good media platforms. The title of this live webinar was Unmasking the Economy. What good timing with the Fed having jacked up interest rates one more time. That was the theme and it featured the famed bank analyst Dick Beauvais of Odeon Capital Group and Matt Van Alstein of Odeon both are on the top rated podcast known as Odeon Capital Conversations hosted by yours truly here. So you won't want to miss a replay of that webinar hosted by Geek Skeezers and Googleization. And it's up there on LinkedIn, YouTube, and on the various media platforms. Uh, I really enjoyed it.